Well, I'm here at Victor to find out about the charity and they've brought out this cardboard box. John, what is in here? <laughs> so, Bryn, in this box are sim specs, simulation spectacles, and we use these as part of our volunteer training to give them an understanding of what someone with certain conditions might see like, basically. Okay. Um, so there's an array of different types of conditions in this box, um, ranging from, you know, having just light perception, for example. So if you want to briefly try those Here's on. Here's where I try these very snazzy looking Almost like okay. science specs. Well, like, yeah, I can't yeah. really see anything. It's very obviously you can't see anything. But <laughs> I can see. Oh, it's weird. I can see. So you can tell the difference between it being quite bright in the room. Yeah. But when you move your hand in front of you, you can see the darkness. It's like shadows just yeah. crossing you. Right? Yeah. So this is an example of light perception. Only. Okay. Um, we also have um, probably the scariest looking pair of spectacles in this box. Um, so some these Doctor Who or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, almost, yeah. And what are these? So these ones are representative of what someone with tunnel vision might see. Oh, like. okay. Um, so... Oh, wow. They're, yeah, very different. Going it's like a pinprick, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so an example of a condition where you might have tunnel vision mm -hmm. uh, is called retinitis pigmentosa. Right. Uh, so that's a degenerative condition where over time eventually the the peripheral vision just reduces. Goes, just reduces. Um, for some people it could happen overnight. Yeah. Uh, for others it could take years to, to develop into this this level of vision at least. Try and explain it. It's very hard to explain because I look like a bit of a, a strange person waving my hands in front of my face. I'm aware of that. But I've got some... It's, um, they're like... Everything around is... It's like you have everything completely closed up like this, but making the hole that you're looking through extremely small. Yeah. And so the only thing you can see is the thing you're looking directly at. Yeah. Everything else is completely closed off. Absolutely. It's quite, um, you have to concentrate quite a lot and you have to look around yeah. even more so. It's quite a horrible experience. I have to say, it's quite a, um, yeah, it's a, it's one of these things you think, okay, I don't want that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that would be, um, it's very, very restrictive. Yes, very restrictive. absolutely. Um, and then I guess the flip side of that would mm. be a loss of central vision. So um, these, okay. these goggles are representative of that. Oh um, wow, yeah. So you can see me in your peripheral over here. Yeah. Um, but if I were to stand directly in front of yeah. you, you wouldn't be able to see me at all. Like I can't see my hand here. Yeah. But I can see it here. Yeah. So it's just basically, it's just that central point. Yeah, it? that central point. So an example of a condition where you might eventually lose your central vision would be something called Stargats. Um, and that, again, degenerative, it can start off being just two tiny pinpricks in the middle of your eye where you've got a blind spot, so to speak, um, and eventually it will grow to, to complete loss of central vision. Um, it varies from person to person, though. Sure. What are, the, what are these actually used for, then? So, as I said, these are used to give our volunteers, during their sighted guide training and their visual impairment awareness training, uh, an idea of what someone in their group for example, on our family weekends where we have lots of different eye conditions, um, may see like. So it gives them an idea of kind of where to stand when mm -hmm. they're talking to a young person or, or a child. Um, it gives them a good idea of um, how, how to just communicate with them as well. So someone with loss of peripheral vision, they know they need to stand directly in front of them if, mm -hmm. they, if they need to talk to them like yeah. they are now. Yeah. Um, so that's you know hugely important to us that people realise that visual impairment presents itself in lots of different ways. Um, another example would be these ones. So these are probably the last ones I'll get you to try. <laughs> sure. Don't worry. Um, so this is an example, and we have the reverse side of this yes. so of a condition called hemi hemianopia. Right. So it's a loss of um, one side of your visual field, but yeah. it affects both eyes. So yeah. at the moment you can see across to the right hand side yeah, of the I room. Can see my hand here. But if you were to try and look over to the left hand like, side. It's gone there. Yeah. Completely gone. But that's directly in front of you. This the only way I can really describe this is if you ever see a shire horse or a police horse yeah. and they've got those, got those blinkers on, on their there. Eyes, yeah. Um yeah. and you imagine that their vision is and this is completely blocking out all of one side of your vision. Yeah. This is this is Possibly one of the most unnerving ones because I can see everything over here. Yeah. But if I look straight on, mm -hmm. 
all of a sudden my vision goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's fascinating. I suppose if you're going to be working with people that are suffering mm. from different forms of visual impairments, yep. <laughs> impairment, yep. then um, then you'd need to understand mm. where they are faltering, what they need help with, and um, it's fascinating to think how how different the world can be. So if you are thinking of donating or getting involved, just come and see Victor. They do amazing work. 